Yeah. Come on, man. You got Larry June in the building. You listen to the morning roast. And we're doing numbers, man. Good job, morning roast. Sock it to me. Hey, 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 hey. Yee! So, B, tonight, I'm about to go to the SI Reardon basketball game for the girls. Where's that game at? 7 o'clock at SI, I believe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Reardon's got a very underrated team this year. They're really good. To, the girls I may, team. I may have to uh, stop by. I got a couple buddies. Pat, my barber. Yeah. His daughter plays for Reardon. Oh, a nice. senior. Nice. Um, and my guy, Will Thompson. Uh, his daughter's a freshman oh, place nice. for the Reardon basketball nice. team. Nice, nice. One of the girls I coached at St. Cecilia's, I believe she's injured right now, but she's been on the team. And shout out Will Watkins, who's coaching them. Yeah. Also does Bay City. And so, uh, yeah, it should be a fun one down in a, a city matchup here in the city. And so, uh, yeah, I think this might be the first time SI and Reardon have played each other in league play Maybe. for girls. Maybe. Because, obviously, yeah. you know, the, the girls are now mm -hmm. new to the school. So, shout out Crusaders and the, uh, the Wildcats. Oh, should be, be a, a good, good one. No, no, that will be a good I'm, game. I'm conflicted. I feel like uh, the Bosa mom. I don't know what I should be wearing tonight. Well, you're a Reardon guy. I know, but I've also can't, got... You can't claim SI and Reardon. Yeah, I've you also got, got pick, my niece playing for, for split SI. Split cap. You know, oh, split can. cap. Like, like I'm, uh, you should do the split cap. You should do the more. Split cap. You should do Sacred Heart, SI, and Reardon. Well, I was thinking of just wearing a WCAL hat and being Rob Lowe. No, nah, but you can't see. That's my see. This is so my you problem. Just shut though. your yapper. This is my problem with you and this whole WCAL thing. You're city WCAL, Reardon, SI, Sacred Heart. But iron sharpens iron. I, look, I got, I got, I got family member. I, you know, I know people there. Sarah, shout out to Coach Walsh. Shout out to Darius Bell, who's the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Shout out to Coach P. He's a coach at Reardon, yeah. Peralta. Hell yeah, yeah, Coach uh, P. Coach, coach down Chicken there. Chicken soul Sarah. for the soup. Yeah. He greeted it every day. Yeah. My all, religion all the teacher. Time. All the time. He's, he's a good Drop dude. Drop give me 20, Shasky. I used to work with him at the uh, junior player development program the, when they used to uh, have that up at Washington High School, 8 to 14. He was the head. He was running the show. Coach P's great. But I'm not repping Valley Christian. I love you guys at Valley Christian. But it's about the city WCAL schools. It's not the Bay Counties League, Urban, uh, Stewart Hall, University. Of course, my AAA schools, Lincoln, Wash. Well, I'm going to let Balboa. the Peninsula know that I've got love for them. I got love uh, for the Bay. Valley Christian, I watched them beat San Ignatius girls team. Actually, that come from behind final minute victory, yeah. and then they won in overtime. Uh -huh. And then, obviously, you got Midi, which is stacked. Midi, they're, a they're absolutely stacked. Nationally ranked team. You know, and I, I've got love for Bellarmine, even though I hate their boys' teams. But I've got love for them to some degree. And then Sarah, come on, man. You can't embrace Sarah. Like Barry Bonds, Greg Jeffries, Lynn Swan, Tom Brady. I love Sarah. Eric Bakhtiari. I love Sarah. They're dominating Like, what you guys, are you doing? Though. The Bishop uh, you know, boys? Look, well, Bishop, got, one brother went I got to love for Sarah. But I'm not repping you guys at Sarah High School. I love y'all, though. I do. Beating up on Sacred Heart the way you guys did late in the year. Come on, man. All right, anyway. You know who you don't have love for? I know who you don't have love for. It's the Cowboys. Yeah, D Dallas. You don't have love for anybody in Dallas, huh? No. State of Texas? Well, they took my manager, too, Bruce Boshi. <laughs> I'm sure Mike Bassick is happy about that as Mike Bassick joins us once again. Of course, he's on 105.3 The Fed down in Dallas. We love him. Rangers pre and post on Bally Sports Southwest. Of course, we know he gave up Barry Vaughn's record break and whole run, but we don't need to bring that up anymore because he's a friend of the program. He's a roaster. Mike, man, long time, no talk. We love to break down to the Dallas Mavericks, and we always love your breakdown of the Dallas Cowboys. And again, for the second straight year, we get Niners and Cowboys in a playoffs. What's the vibe down there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? Excited because the last time the Cowboys won a road game uh, during the playoffs, I was a freshman in high school. I'm 45 <laughs> years old now. So <clears throat> that was a big time win. Obviously, San Francisco looked great in their game. We were kind of we're going to play Philadelphia, but after the uh, New York Giants win, you looked at that San Francisco game and you thought, man, I want to watch this Purdy kid and see how he does in a do-or-die situation. And he looked really good, especially in the second half. So it makes us down here go, we would rather be facing Garoppolo wow. than, than Purdy. That's a, you know kind of like, hey, if, if this and that, and we get Garoppolo's been to the Super Bowl, NFC Championship game last year, but we know that Garoppolo is an average back. Brock Purdy is kind of reminding us down here of a little bit of what Tony Romo did in 2000 around him. But when Romo came in for Drew Bledsoe and then led that team to the playoffs, mm. we're kind of seeing similarities with Brock Purdy. Uh, Mike, your line's chopping up a little bit. Um, That's ours down here. The, the line's chopping. You guys want to fix his line? It's kind of chopping up, and we'll get him right back uh -oh. on. Yeah. Uh -oh. We'll get you back on. I just saw Mike Bassick. Right. He tweeted Tony, retweeted Tony Dungy. 
And Tony Junji said this in a tweet. I want to. I'm going to yeah. run this by you, and then we're running by Mike. Did it? Did it start with ZZZs? Because he's no. falling asleep, dude. Al Michaels and Tony Junji. I was one of the on the worst. Al Michaels thing. Yeah, but he's just old. Al Michaels used to be good. He's not good anymore. He doesn't care. He doesn't. He doesn't care. They announced that Jaguars Chargers game like it was week three of the preseason. And it touched that was em- embarrassing. It's the, one of the largest comeback victories in playoff history. Playoff history. And these guys were snoozing. But Tony Dungy did have a good re- have a good tweet. As good as the Cowboys looked Monday night against the Bucks. I think they have very little chance against the Niners next week, and it's not their fault. There are very few examples ever of teams winning Monday night road games and then a Sunday road game. And now you give San Francisco an extra day of rest. And look at this. Niners, Seattle, Saturday afternoon. Dallas and Tampa, Monday night. Dallas and Niners on Sunday, 3.30. That's a 52-hour difference in rest plus two plane rides for the Dallas Cowboys. Tony Dungy is saying that's tough to overcome. Well, cry me a river. Win your division. <laughs> like, we, the Niners played a playoff game on short rest. They played Sunday last week and then Saturday uh, in the playoff game. So, uh, uh, wait, cry me a river. Mike, They're are you home. back here? They're at home. <laughs> Mike, Mike, last year you guys yeah. got physically punked, and you brought up the Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo thing. Jimmy threw you guys back into that game by just air mailing right. a three flies up interception and just breathing life into the sideline for the Cowboys. How are they going to avoid getting physically punked in this game? So that is a big concern here, and it will be Hankins. So the Cowboys traded for Hankins uh, during the season, and that did help with their run defense. Now, he got hurt for uh, the last about four or five games of the year, and the Cowboys' run defense suffered because of it. Also, Leighton Vander Esch got hurt late in the year, and they both came back and played uh, Monday night and both had very good games. I'm not saying that solves the problem. I am worried that San Francisco is going to be able to – control the tempo of the game because of Christian McCaffrey, because of Debo Samuel, because the Cowboys really are best when teams are in passing situations. And if you saw what happened to Tom Brady, he doesn't Mm -hmm. have the best offensive line. But if the Cowboys get into a situation, this will be key to me for San Francisco. If San Francisco somehow finds themselves down by two scores and they can't really just run the ball where you're not sure what they're going to do. That's when Dallas's defense is at its best because, hey, Bosa and, and Parsons are the two best defensive players in the NFL. And they're different, but when you give them, hey, they're not running the ball, they can cause so much havoc. And so the key for Dallas is, is wanting Parsons to be in those passing situations where he can put a lot of pressure on Purdy. Oh, that's interesting. Mike Bassick, 105.3, the fan in Dallas, also the Rangers pre- and post-game uh, po- pre and post host on Valley Sports Southwest. Mike, you, you bring up that defense. I want to go to the offense for a second with the Dallas Cowboys. They probably are feeling a bit confident against this 49ers defense after what we've seen from the Niners defense on tape over the last month. They've given up a lot of deep shots, Mike. A lot of deep passes. DK Metcalf had his way. Now, they did get the rush because they had to lead early on. But that Dallas offense probably is feeling a bit confident this Sunday against this Niners defense, huh? I would say kind of uh, because of the inconsistency of Dak Prescott, right? Dak looked like arguably the best quarterback in Wild Card weekend. But then you saw him the week before against Washington look like a guy who you're scared to death to take into the playoffs. Mm. And so that's the thing about Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott plays the way he did on Monday night, I think the Cowboys can win the Super Bowl. I'm not predicting that. But if Dak plays that well, now he's in that top five quarterback category. Unfortunately, we've seen from Dak even go back to last year in the playoffs against San Francisco where he can look very average and have moments but look very average. So we are excited about that. The thing is, maybe for San Francisco, which helps out, CeeDee Lamb is not like a huge deep threat. He can catch a deep ball here and there, but he's not like a guy like DK Metcalf. He's more of a guy that works the middle of the field. He's best in the slot. Uh, Probably Dalton Schultz is the second best kind of pass catcher for the Cowboys. So in one way, it could be a little bit of an advantage for San Francisco that the Cowboys don't really have a true deep threat because Michael Gallup's coming off of the knee injury and has not been the same this year. Last year, with all the penalties they racked up, and then obviously the situational football down the stretch, it's hard for for just the average fan to not point at Mike McCarthy and be like, dude, what are you doing over there? Uh, He's had a great year this year. 
But how much pressure is on him, especially with all this Sean Payton stuff going around? We know Sean Payton's got ties to to the, to the Cowboys um, to some degree. So how much pressure is on Mike McCarthy heading into this game? From my perspective, very little. I think really? his job is secure. Here's the deal from Sean Payton. Yes, Jerry and Sean have a relationship. Stephen Jones really runs the Cowboys now. Jerry, Jerry didn't even know who Chris Godwin was when we interviewed him on Friday. So <laughs> I just... He doesn't, he's not following the game anymore. He has turned the team over to Stephen Jones. He will never give up owner, president, general manager, because if they do win, he wants all the praise. His ego is that big. <laughs> but really, it's Stephen Jones is, uh, he's running the show. Stephen Jones does not want Sean Payton at all because Sean Payton likes running personnel. He likes controlling the salary cap, and we saw what he did to New Orleans cap. Uh, he likes controlling draft and trading in the draft. And, and Stephen Jones and Will McClay will never let that happen. Those are really the two people running it. So, yes, there are rumblings of Sean Payton, but from the people that know Sean Payton, because he does live in the Dallas area uh, and has, even though he's coached the, the Saints this whole time, most people will tell you that are close to the Cowboys, Stephen Jones will never let Sean Payton be the head coach. Mike Bassick here on a morning row. Sean 95-7, the game. Last one before we get you out. We do have John Lynch coming up at 8 o'clock to break down this matchup as well. Last year, I know there was a lot of talk heading into the week, uh, that wild card game. I know Michael Parsons was saying, hey, man, I used to beat up bullies growing up. Have the Cowboys kind of circled mm. the 49ers on? I know they weren't on a schedule in the regular season, but that, have they looked at the 49ers saying, we want to get another crack at that team at some point this year? I love the question, and I will say yes to this, uh, whether it's uh, interviewing Odigizua, who's a defensive tackle. With, we've talked to them about getting bullied in that game, and they said that is our goal, and that was their goal in the preseason, and that was their goal in the season. And I don't know if they totally accomplished it, but they did not want to get bullied. Mm. And what a game here to see if the Cowboys will get bullied or if they will be able to change the, the kind of scenario and the storyline of this game. Because going into it, it does look like San Francisco can bully almost anybody in the NFL. And if you can put, I don't know, I think Brock Purdy's done a great job, but he is a rookie. If you can put more on Brock Purdy's shoulders, and he did a great job in the second half, but will he do it again? If you can be in a one- or two-point game and maybe make San Francisco more of a passing team than a ball control team, could Brock Purdy make a mistake that the Cowboys take advantage of? I know it was a long time ago, but I rewatched the 92 championship oh, game. Oh, why are you doing this? Young, well, young Troy Aikman, this is how games can change, where no. anything can happen. Troy Aikman, to start the third quarter, has a drive, and right around midfield, he throws an interception to Bill Romanowski. Mm -hmm. He dropped the ball. If Bill Romanowski, this is just how many times games change, if Bill Romanowski catches that ball, returns it to, let's say, Dallas' is 35 or so, mm -hmm. like a 10 or 15-yard return, how much does the game change that now San Francisco's driving the ball to start the third quarter and takes the lead, mm -hmm. rather than he drops that pass, Dallas drives and takes a two-score lead. And that's just, to me, I don't want to call it luck. My dad taught me, look, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Of so course. I hate when people say you get lucky because mm -hmm. I think you work hard enough to make your own luck. But when you look at stuff like that and you go, man, you catch that ball, we probably win that game. You drop that ball, and it gave them the opportunity to drive down, put a two-score lead that San Francisco could never come back from. So that those one moment, those single moments – can can cause a, a win or loss in these games. Yeah, like the second play of that game with the hold that Bonte still says is Guy a hold, and, and I, I don't care what he yeah, says. It was, it's, it's a, a holdy call. It, it was an 80-yard touchdown I, for I, I lied for so many years, Mike, about that, that not being a holdy call, and watching it back the other day, Guy McIntyre definitely hooked him, well, it, and I was a holdy forget call. Forget that. You, we're all about the same <laughs> age, and I know you're a, a Texas boy, and so you love to see him. I hated Jimmy Johnson's face. Oh. Hated his face. <laughs> I still hate Jerry I, Jones. I hate Alvin Harper. Like and when he went to Tampa Bay, I was like, thank you, God. We're finally gonna beat you guys because there's no Alvin Harper. Who did you hate on the Niners? Keep it real. You know who I hate? I think we're gonna have on because he's a Dallas guy. Merton Hanks and that stupid neck. Oh, <laughs> of course. The, <laughs> the chicken, chicken dance. dance. Yeah. Number 36. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a, a great times. player, and obviously he made plays. It, you, you don't hate the bad players. You hate the ones that of make course. plays to beat you. So Merton <laughs> Hanks was a very good player, but that neck thing that he did and everything, I think, drove a lot of Dallas oh, yeah. people insane. I, I mean, the game may come down to just Nick Bosa and Micah Parsons. Who has the better day? 
Michael Parsons had a hell of a day last week against Tampa Bay. Last put Monday a phone against in Tampa. Micah's hands. Yeah, no, maybe well, he'll just tweet all yeah, game. Yeah, well, Micah, he loves Twitter, doesn't he, Mike? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the new age, right? I yeah. mean, I wasn't around during Twitter when I played. It was just getting started. But I tell you what, man, Micah Parsons, this is my opinion. Uh, it started becoming football relevant around 1985. Micah Parsons is the best defensive player for the Dallas Cowboys I've ever seen. Better than DeMarcus Ware. Haley? You know, better... Better than Haley. I just Randy think White. that this guy is is going to be one of those. As long as he stays healthy, he's going to be one of those elites that we talk about, one of the greatest defensive players in oh. NFL football. Wow, Mike, good stuff as always, man. We love talking to you. We'll talk to you during basketball season yeah. as well. Uh, I know the Mavericks are playing some good basketball. Luka looking like an MVP. Mike, thanks for the time yeah, you're as the always. Best, Mike. Thanks for having me on, guys. Good luck Sunday, but not too much. <laughs> no doubt okay. about it. 3 30. You should get your leg warmed up. They <laughs> might need you to kick in that game. <laughs> Mike Bassick appearing on the Butt Light guest line. Butt Light, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. We love Butt Light.